Wow, it's such a windy night here in the UK. The wind is blowing very strongly. Talking of wind, there is an expression in the English language. To get wind of something, you get wind of something. If you get wind of something, it means you hear about something. You receive some information in your ear. Perhaps you overhear a conversation taking place or maybe someone whispers the information into your ear directly. Are you receiving some information now? Is there something that you are getting wind of at this very moment? I hope so because it's just after 10 o'clock here in the UK. It's a Wednesday night and this is English late and live. Yeah! Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for that. Oh, how kind of you. That is very kind indeed. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Well, are you happy? I really hope so. Yes, we've all made it to the middle of the week. It is Wednesday night here in the UK. I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there. I am right here in England. And my name is Mr. Duncan. And guess what I do? I teach English on YouTube and I have been doing that for over 11 years. It's true. I am virtually the first person to start teaching English on YouTube. I'm not joking. I'm not lying. Honestly, would I lie to you? By the way, talking of YouTube, can I just say a big <laughs> happy birthday to YouTube? Yes, YouTube is celebrating its birthday this week. So a big happy birthday. Happy birthday to YouTube. 13 years. Yes, this week, the anniversary of YouTube itself, 13 years ago. Can anyone tell me what the first ever YouTube video was? The first ever video uploaded to YouTube. Does anyone know what it is? Can someone tell me what it is? Because it is YouTube's 13th birthday and I've been on YouTube for nearly 12 years. So almost for the whole of YouTube's existence, I have been on YouTube teaching English. It's true. I'm not joking. Why? Why would I joke about that? It's a very windy evening, very windy. As we mentioned earlier, we have a lot of wind at the moment, a very breezy night. And there you can see one of the trees near my house blowing in the wind. Oh, yes. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Yes, it is. So I hope you are OK. I've had a busy week doing all sorts of things. I am still renovating the kitchen. I have got to carry on doing that tomorrow. We have a special guest coming to stay here in around about three weeks time. So I'm getting the kitchen renovated because it's been five years without any work being done in the kitchen. So I'm doing that at the moment and I will continue doing it tomorrow. So I will be very busy for the rest of this week. And don't forget also, I will be back with you on Sunday as well. You may have noticed that I am a man. Now, I know that not many men are teaching English anymore on YouTube. I am probably one of the few left, but there are lots of sexy ladies 
Yes, it would appear that there are lots and lots of sexy ladies who are teaching English and it would appear that everyone wants to watch them now. They don't want to watch me. It's a little unfair, don't you think so? The live chat <laughs> is up and running. Now, I, I was a little bit distracted tonight. I'm going to be honest with you. I was slightly distracted tonight because I realised that my favorite TV presenter was on television tonight. So I did spend about half an hour watching my favorite TV channel, which is a shopping channel. I'm not joking. What you can see down there, there is my favorite TV channel and it is a shopping channel. And the presenter you can see now is my favorite presenter on that particular channel. He is very, very crazy and some might say he's a little bit like me because some people accuse me of the same thing can you believe it so there he is i was watching him tonight and i got very very distracted so <laughs> coming up tonight <laughs> we have lots of things for you we have uses of the word fine if you can think of any yourself you are more than welcome to join in uses of the word fine and there are quite a few in the english language and we have a mystery object as well tonight now i think i will introduce the mystery object after steve arrives so mr steve will be here in around about 20 minutes yes he is out as usual on a wednesday evening he is rehearsing for a show that he is appearing in so mr steve will be here a little bit later on and we do have we have a mystery object i'm not joking so much coming tonight on this live stream yes it's live english live right across youtube and you are more than welcome to join in It is Wednesday night and after 10 o'clock, of course, I am here with you live every Wednesday at 10 p.m. UK time and also every Sunday live for two hours every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. So lots of things to look at during the week. Let's have a look at the live chat, shall we? Because the live chat is on. Oh, yes. Someone recognized my singing. Yes, I was singing a song. Thank you very much for recognizing it. That is <laughs> that is very kind of you. <laughs> Lots of people on the live chat. Let's have a look at some of the people. Oh, Belarusia. Belarusia was here first. Well done to you. Hi, everyone. Alamgir is here as well. Patricia, Daniela. Anna also Tomek is here hi there I decided to drop by but only to say hello because I'm about to hit the sack so it sounds to me as if Tomek is about to go to sleep Anna is here I am happy to be here with you all thank you Anna Berlin for you and also Belarusia again watching in Argentina Alamgir what time is it now there well uh, where where I am now it's about quarter past 10 at night Nicole is here as well hello Nicole thank you for joining me on this Wednesday evening Canal is here oh it's very good that we can hear you you are more than welcome yes I am streaming live right now Anna recognized the song that i was singing bob dylan's classic song blowing in the wind the answer my friend is blowing in the wind so lots of people on the live chat pedro is here oh it's nice to see you here as well alec ob 
oh yes well done alec alec says the first ever video on youtube was called me at the zoo you are right that is in fact the first ever video uploaded to youtube you are spot on well done well done for that so yes the, the very first video because youtube is celebrating its 13th birthday this week hello from russia it's nice to see you today thank you alice you are more than welcome also juvan crystal and aurora is here as well what is the temperature there the temperature here in the uk well it's quite cold at the moment it's cooled down we had a lovely week last week with the weather but sadly this week it's gone very cool also we have bernardo hello bernardo nice to see you here lots of people in the live chat it's great to see you all here and it's nice to see so many people getting involved hello from spain oh thank you bernardo i was wondering where you were watching so now i know you are watching in spain hello sir how are you obda obai dilla milad is here as well wilson cheng apparently wilson is watching in england wilson whereabouts in england are you watching i am very intrigued <laughs> i'm very interested to find out where you are watching so there it is the live chat and you are more than welcome to get involved as well because that's why we are here i'm here to help you with your english and also you are welcome to join in and if you just want to sit there maybe you are feeling a little bit shy maybe too shy to get involved with the live stream but don't worry you can sit there and you can practice your listening skills instead does that sound like a good idea i think so so it's youtube's birthday youtube is 13 years old this week but the strange thing is i haven't actually heard youtube talk about their birthday they haven't even mentioned it this week i haven't heard anyone on youtube or seen anyone from youtube mentioning their birthday at all which i find very very interesting yes very interesting indeed <gasps> there are some beautiful colors in my garden at the moment do you want to see what's going on in the garden oh take a look at this <gasps> oh look at that look at that isn't that incredible the beauty of nature the colors look at that oh my goodness you can see the blue sky you can see the green of the leaves and you can see the pink of the magnolia the magnolia tree is looking very nice at the moment i must say it has come out and it is looking rather rather nice i must say so there it is the magnolia tree is looking rather splendid very lovely and one of my neighbors also has a magnolia tree but her magnolia tree is white but it's it's quite magnificent it's actually larger than mine believe it or not and the view today wasn't too bad we had some sunshine and can you see in the distance you can see there are many fields that are growing that are having something called rapeseed you can see all of the yellow patches across the landscape and that is rapeseed growing around the area so there it is a video that i shot today and you can see looking across into the distance and many farmers now are growing rapeseed it's something that has occurred over the past maybe 10 years more and more uk farmers are now growing 
rapeseed and of course rapeseed is very useful it can be used as food or it can be used in the food industry and it can be used as a form of fuel as well it is what you call biofuel so rapeseed is a very popular crop these days especially in this area but one of the problems with rapeseed is that I think it makes my hay fever very bad so that's the problem with hay fever all sorts of things can affect the actual illness so every year I suffer with hay fever but when the rapeseed comes out my hay fever gets really really bad it gets quite serious indeed so there you can see looking into the distance you can see the yellow fields and all of those fields contain rapeseed a very popular crop that is growing in this area so what about where you live what types of crops grow where you live anything in particular any particular types of crop grow where you are if you want to let me know you are more than welcome to tell me on the live chat so there it was a beautiful view today sunny but quite cool it would appear that summer has disappeared hopefully only temporarily the live chat is on for those who are interested in getting involved it is an amazing collection of colors thank you very much for that let's have a look oh <laughs> that's interesting I've never seen my live chat do that before let's see if we can get that back come on come back come back to mr. Duncan please <laughs> I will try and get that sorted out because it looks as if it's gone a bit crazy there come on <laughs> this is live by the way come on come back I don't know why that's done that I will see what I can do about that later oh there it is but I think we're heading back now back to where we should be there it is <laughs> thank you very much the flowers are in bloom it is spring in the northern hemisphere thank you Anna for that you are very welcome no problem how can we call the thing used for closing bottles you can use a cork quite often used for wine bottles and of course you can use other things such as a screw top now it, it would appear that I have one right here in fact I actually have a screw top right here so would you like to see it here it is <laughs> for those who are interested here it is I'm just going to take the screw off and then we will have a look so yes how to describe this particular item you can describe this as a screw top or you can describe it as a cap cap so just like the cap that I'm wearing on my head you can use the same word to describe this so it is a cap or a top and you screw the top onto the bottle so this is a screw cap or a screw top so I hope that helps you I do like answering your questions if I can answer I will <laughs> if I can't answer then I will maybe answer it on Sunday I will see see what happens so lots of people on the live chat let's have another look let's see if we can get it right this time <laughs> ah okay then hi mr. Duncan I'm watching you from Mexico hello to Rosie very nice to see you Rosie also Miriam is here hi Miriam nice to see you again I'm Brazilian from Sao Paulo and I'm learning a lot of things with you thank you very much Aurora says 
here there are many crops beans rice and tobacco also coffee as well so lots of different things are grown where you are Miriam another Miriam so we had Mirian and now we have Miriam hi Miriam how are you I'm okay thank you very much but once again a very very busy week I have been so busy I can't begin to tell you how busy I have been this week I think Mr Steve has just arrived by the way Mr Duncan there is a tree of mangoes in my back garden oh Pedro Pedro you are teasing me how, how could you do that I love mangoes so much I really do like mangoes so yes I, I, I like mangoes and I'm very very jealous that you have fresh mangoes growing in your garden Luan Luan Diane says hello Mr Duncan it's my first time joining the live chat I am excited so thank you Luana Luana Diane I hope I pronounced your name right welcome to the live chat and welcome to the world of live English yes I'm live every single Wednesday 10 p.m. UK time and every Sunday every Sunday as well just to remind you <laughs> so you can see it there it is every Sunday 2 p.m. and every Wednesday 10 p.m. and don't forget both of those are UK time yes they are Mr. Steve will be here in a moment because I think I can hear I can hear his car coming down the drive or is that coming up the drive because the driveway outside our house is actually on a slope so the driveway goes upwards so when Mr. Steve drives off when he leaves he he drives down and when he arrives back when he comes back when he returns he drives up <laughs> up the drive because the driveway outside my house is literally up hill it's true so the live chat is very busy tonight thank you very much so many people are here Wow apparently Louis says here it is very hot because it is summertime it's supposed to be summer now here in the UK it's early summer here in the UK early summer hey Mr Duncan as soon as you can I would like you to visit my city in Sao Paulo thank you Miriam I do get a lot of invitations to be honest I get so many invitations from many people Andreas here are the best coffee crops can you guess the country well I'm going to have a guess it might be I'm going to get into trouble now for this it might be Colombia or it might be Brazil <laughs> that's all I'm saying Mustafa is here hello Mr Duncan from Iraq many thanks for your live streams they are very helpful thank you Mustafa and I'm so pleased to hear that my lessons have been useful Nicole says I have had hay fever for many many years just like me yes I've had hay fever for so many years since I was a child I used to be affected very very badly by hay fever when I was a kid it used to make me very ill indeed but as I've got older as I've become older the hay fever is not as bad as it used to be fortunately so over the years the hay fever every year has subsided it is not as serious having said that as I said earlier the rapeseed which is now growing near my house the rapeseed does 
cause hay fever it causes bad hay fever for me so I have a feeling that I am quite allergic to rapeseed pollen so it's actually the pollen from the rapeseed that causes the problem sadly for those who are wondering what I do I teach English on YouTube and now I'm going to show you a little bit of one of my lessons and this is one of my full English lessons an excerpt from Mr. Duncan's full English number 19 Here's a good example of an English word that is often used incorrectly. The word paraphrase is one that is often misused. It is on occasion placed within a sentence by mistake. To paraphrase something means to change the wording of a sentence so as to make it clearer. To emphasize the meaning of something might require you to paraphrase you reword a sentence so as to make it appear more clear teachers often paraphrase sentences so as to allow their students to recognize the important points of a subject to express something in as clear a way as possible might require some paraphrasing to take place even here in my english lessons i often paraphrase so as to ensure that my explanations come across as clearly as they can many people believe that to paraphrase is to shorten a sentence this is not true to emphasize and clarify a sentence is to paraphrase the word originates from the greek word para which means modification and phrasen which means tell can you see what i'm doing here i'm moving these empty plastic bottles to the recycling box at the back of my house they will then be collected by the local recycling plant and taken to a place where they will be melted down and reused to recycle is the process of reusing something over and over these days recycling is carried out all around the world almost anything can be recycled the most commonly recycled materials include water, paper and plastic. Many electrical devices can now be recycled too. Most metallic objects are also recyclable, from discarded cans right up to disused cars. Many things these days can be recycled. We often hear the word sustainable used when discussing recycling. This word refers to the action of maintaining a balance between the use and replacement of materials needed for the manufacturing of everyday items. Sustainable forests and sustainable oceans being the two most common places where things such as wood, gas and oil are found. It's time to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a word or phrase that is used during a certain period or is generally popular. Today's buzzword is prank. The word prank can be used as both a noun and verb. A practical joke or trick played on someone is a prank. To do something mischievous to someone so as to get a reaction from them is prank you play a prank on someone or you prank someone you create a fictitious or fake situation for someone to deal with such as an angry phone call this is a prank another example is 
you might arrange for a friend to be arrested by someone pretending to be a police officer to make someone believe that something bad is happening when it isn't is to prank someone the prank is the trick or joke to prank someone is the action of playing a prank pranks are quite amusing for those watching from afar but not so for the victim of the prank we can use the phrase hoax to mean prank you hoax someone it's a hoax believe it or not the word prank has been in use for over 400 years how are you enjoying today's full english is it okay i hope so they say that english can be a confusing language to learn with many clauses and rules to remember a good example being the differences between the words less and fewer in standard english you should only use fewer with things that are countable and less with things that are uncountable in their general use the words less and fewer refer to having a smaller amount or not so much of something so less is used with uncountable things less sugar less water less light less money less time whereas fewer is used with countable things fewer cats fewer people fewer words fewer days we often use less and less in a sentence to show a decrease or steady fall it is worth remembering that when numbers are being discussed the word less is used to show that one number is smaller than the other less than three less than ten the confusion between less and few is a common one even among native english speakers here we go and guess who's here now please give a round of applause he is here to join us live on youtube it's mr steve <laughs> look hello yeah mr <laughs> steve is here hooray hello everyone i've appeared while you were showing that uh, lesson well i think i think they've guessed that <laughs> I just thought I'd say <laughs> it's great it's great that Steve is already explaining everything just in case you haven't noticed Steve is here now there he is I'm saying nothing hello Steve hello Mr Duncan how are you oh uh, I'm okay but a very busy week here and also in the UK because we had some big news this week didn't we in the UK and oh. and f for once it had nothing to do with brexit i'm so pleased that we had some news in the uk that had nothing to do with brexit can you guess what it was can you guess what the big news story was this week the thing that everyone is talking about at the moment can you guess what it is is it another mouth to feed it is another mouth for the great british taxpayer to 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 pay out and to give money to yet another hungry mouth but it's no ordinary mouth it is a mouth of a prince <laughs> thank you hello thank you canal thank you ultimus thank you Miriam. thank you mustafa thank you anna anna i think anna is one of your All biggest your lovely hellos and I think, greetings i think anna is one of your biggest fans is she i think so you have Hamza says I look like Robin who's Robin I don't know oh uh, Berlin for you hello hello to you too <laughs> <laughs> was that an accent then I, I'm limber oh is from it? Peru hello How exciting Peru hello to Peru health and nutrition I like the sound of that I'm into health and nutrition 
Ahmad. Al Jilani. Yes, good nutrition. <laughs> That's what we want. Hello, Alec OB. Oh, hello to Percy as well. Percy. Hello, Percy. Percy Gamboa. Uh, is it your first time here? Because I'm always interested to speak to people who are first time chatters because there are a lot of people watching but they don't get involved apparently Hamza says Robin is a famous football player in Bayern München the, the, the chat's gone mad I can't say hello to everyone now yes everyone wants disappearing ev off the screen everyone wants to say hello to you because you're so popular hello can you see hello Miss hello <laughs> there he everyone is. hello <laughs> Oh, how lovely. What a lovely greeting. That's the best greeting I've had all day. Do you realise it might take us the rest of the night to actually say hello to everyone? All of Mr Steve's fans. I'm not joking. That's the best greeting I've had all day. So, yes, we have a new royal baby. Yet another royal mouth for the taxpayer to feed. Now, as of yet, as of this Wednesday night, there is still no name for the new prince <gasps> Bernardo says yes yes it was the new baby it was a couple of days ago that we 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 saw the arrival well we didn't personally see the arrival this is one thing they don't do yet we, we don't have live births on television could you imagine that can you imagine in the future maybe there will be a reality TV show where a member of the royal family actually gives birth live on television because anything goes nowadays they are so desperate for viewers so i think you might have a live royal birth one day the whole thing on camera in high definition wow can you imagine can that, that happen? by the way if you're trying to an interesting fact here oh which mr duncan knows as well about uh, environmental aspects if you're trying to save the planet what is the, uh, the the biggest thing you can do if you're trying to if you're trying to cut mm. down on your CO2 emissions, oh. cut down on your use of of the planet's resources? I know what you're going to say. What's the single biggest thing you can do? I know. By far, that outweighs everything. Recycling. Forget recycling. Forget forget not having a car. Forget flying. Well, flying actually is the, probably the second biggest thing you can do to cut out to save the save the environment. What's the number one biggest thing? So, so any the, guesses? So the thing that if you don't do it will help to save the planet massively beyond anything you could possibly do and let's, day to day. Let's just say we've already given a clue. <laughs> a little pink screaming. Yes. If you want to save the planet, don't have children don't or don't have, have as many. <laughs> yes, don't have as many or don't <gasps> have any. Because you just think if you have it, I'm not saying don't have children, obviously you've got to have children. But, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, because every time you bring a child into the world, that, that you've instantly doubled the amount of pollution <laughs> that that child throughout its entire life will create. Every time a child pops out, a new disaster appears on the planet. So maybe you could well. you could cut down on the amount of children you have. But that's one of the, the most environmentally damaging things that a human being can do is to have a child. Let's take the emotion out of it. The emotion of wanting a child. Can you explain why, though? Why, why is it so bad? Well, well, I'm not saying it's bad for the. It's not bad to have children no, per se. Bad, okay, but, why? But, but you've said you've made the statement. So it, why is it bad for the environment? Okay, well, you think of how much stuff you use in your lifetime, how much food you eat, which which generates CO two because they've got a if you if you uh, veg, if you're vegetarian or whether you're uh, whether you're a meat eater, you've still got to make that food. That takes energy. Uh, when as you grow up, the clothes. Uh, the food and then you you might start to drive and then you fly in aeroplanes and go on holiday so all the all the stuff that you use i think the words and the word steve's CO2, looking for co2 whatever i'm just trying to the word steve's looking for is resources 
in, yes, the, the environmental the, impact, the total environmental yes. impact that one person has throughout their lifetime is massive. So if you have two children, you've doubled, trebled the amount of, uh, of, of stuff that will be used or resources in the future. But if you, if you have two children, it triples. Well, there's you uh, living oh, yes. for 75 years. That's so it, if you the, have one child, that, if you have one child, that's fine. But I'm one there, child each that there, replaces but, you. Yeah, but, yes, I know. But if you're still alive, you're still there anyway. Yes. You're, you were there anyway. So I think it's just double, isn't it, if you have two children? Well, let's not go into that. Yes. <laughs> but, but anyway, but I'll, the point I was making okay. is uh, that uh, children have the greatest environmental impact of anything. I think I think I think Steve is actually doing the show to the neighbours tonight. Maybe maybe if a volcano goes up, well yes, a volcano eruption maybe. That's another interesting fact, volcanoes. If you have a big volcanic eruption, mm -hmm. it's equivalent to something like all the cars in the world for about 20 years amount of amount of pollution that they produce if you have a massive volcanic eruption it, it just wipes out anything that mm. cars do well it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit like what saw the dinosaurs off i suppose it's a bit like that so you you get you get all of the pollution and also, also if it's bad enough you might it might also affect other things on the planet is it something now let's have a look at the live chat oh <laughs> i probably Oh, created right. some kind of yes, controversy uh, can I, can talking I, about not having children. Uh, yes, okay. Well, well, can, I, can I just finish the sentence that I'm, I'm coming out with? <laughs> I, I would love to finish a sentence one week. Not with me on. <laughs> Clearly not. The live chat is busy. Let's have a look. Talking about saving the planet, I recycle my trash or my rubbish and water. Thank you, Mirian, for that. Yes, because in the full English lesson that we just watched, we were talking about recycling plastic Ooh. as well. Anything else? Uh, sorry, recycling plastic. Yes, I'm being I'm being a little controversial because obviously I'm not suggesting that nobody ever has children. No, I, well, we're the not, human race would die out. We're not actually saying that. What we're saying, just making a fact. Yes, making a fact. Making a making a <laughs> statement that. Uh, <laughs> When you produce a child, it does it does it obviously have an environmental impact. Yes. If you're just looking at that, just taking emotion out of it. Yes. Oh yes, yes. I think just looking at the I facts. think that's got I think we've got that across. I don't think we Hope need to keep so. Yes, well, I think we have. I think people I think I think people understand that we're not saying you should never have children ever again. What we're saying is the impact that every new child has. Yes. So when a new baby when a new baby pops out, would you like to hear the sound of a baby popping out? Oh, go on. Well, there it was. No, yeah, here it is again. <laughs> well. Oh, oh I is. can't hear it. Oh, oh right, OK. <laughs> there it is. There's the sound of a baby popping out. And, yes. and this is the sound of the royal baby popping out do you want to hear the royal baby popping out go on so this is the sound of the royal baby coming out <laughs> no the royal baby you see the royal baby gets a round of applause afterwards yes so that's what happened ah mr steve oh, yes oh no <laughs> what <laughs> mr steve <laughs> have you <laughs> ever had a fine while driving i don't think steve wants to talk about that it's a very sore point the answer is yes nicole <laughs> i have had a few uh a few issues with speeding uh over the years but having said that having driven for over 30 years i didn't get a single speeding ticket until the last four years and then i got three on the trot because they'd got mobile speed cameras everywhere. I wasn't doing very much. I mean, like, a, for example, if the speed limit is 30 miles an hour, I, I was only doing 34. And I got fined for that, which I think was very unfair. Yes. Anyway. Uh, let's, OK, OK. I think we've got it, Steve. Yes. You, <laughs> Steve has, in, in, in one word, yes. See, that's all you yes. needed to say, yes. Uh, because we're looking at uses of the word fine. So in that sense, fine can mean penalty. So a penalty for doing something that you shouldn't, something that is against the law. 
you will be fined they they, yes. they give you a fine normally in in the sense of money you have to pay a penalty a, an amount of money as a fine so there is one use of the word fine yes very but, good but getting a fine is not fine <laughs> no <laughs> that's another use of fine you, you, you're racing ahead now Steve I'm racing ahead so another use of the word fine is pleasant or agreeable so something that is good or agreeable or something that is pleasant we can say that it's fine, fine. it's fine you you accept it you agree with it you, the weather you, today is fine so when the weather is agreeable if it's a nice sunny day you can say that the weather is fine so there are many many ways of using the word fine isn't it a fine day today mr duncan it certainly is it's 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 a very fine night as well because we have live english with our late and live every single wednesday you can catch do you know when when i was growing up mm -hmm. there were around four i think about four four and a half billion people on the planet four and a half billion the word that was around 1970 something like that okay and i think since then it's practically nearly doubled yes in the last 40 years yes because the population is around seven something now seven something billion if anyone could look that up for us to see what the current population of the world is there is a there is a, actually a website that gives you the the count of of the exact population of planet earth i don't know how they do it it's it's <laughs> almost as if it's almost as if they have a man running around uh checking on all of the babies popping out by the way the sound of a baby popping out is this there it is <laughs> was that what you sounded like mr duncan when you were born when i came was out <laughs> i was very small i just i came out very easily i just sort of flopped out what's that crying sound uh uh very soon afterwards the, your, your mother was crying as well <laughs> my, my, my mother's been crying ever since <laughs> ever since i was born fine i think uh i think it is saluting between two or more people i don't know what that means um i think we've mm. missed we've missed some of the things here um there was a comment earlier about the environmental impact of farts it's, yes it's just at the top there yes I who said that now we can't quite see so it. animal farts yes that's that's right let me just uh, try and do this this is something i did earlier and i made a right mess of it ah, there we go Bernardo. ah yes do you know that the farts <laughs> from animals and people <laughs> some people in particular some people make more farts than others i'm not saying who bernardo yes you are right i suppose so yes yes, yes. you might say that the reason for that is because uh farts <laughs> uh contain a, a gas called methane 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 which has an impact on uh global warming in a similar way that co2 does but methane has a greater impact so all the animals particularly ruminants like cows ruminants so a vegetarian sort of any animal that eats lots of plant material uh, is producing large amounts of methane through their uh, through wind shall we say use the yes. word wind gas gas from their uh, digestive processes yes uh, and methane has a high impact on global warming or, or you might uh, say you might also say trump as well trump because in in british english yes. in british english trump means fart so if you let out a fart we can say that you have let out a trump you have trumped blown off blown off so there are many words for that i don't know <laughs> i don't know what it is about these live streams we always end up talking about things like that 
by the way we have a mystery object tonight oh, yes. shall we reveal the mystery object now don't reveal all of it Steve we're just going to reveal a little bit of it so here is a little bit can you see it there it is there is a little part of the mystery object if you blink you might miss it so there it is the mystery object looks like a snake it likes Steve oh it seems to like you so there it is tonight's well is that enough for people to guess it is for now so I will show a little bit more later we are busy renovating the kitchen at the moment and during the week well renovating. last weekend last weekend <laughs> we went to look at some flooring that looks nice now this is the floor that we I think we've decided on this have we yes you have well I haven't decided <laughs> but that that's the floor so what what do you think about it out there in YouTube land what do you think about our choice of floor now the problem with our floor is that it's not solid it is actually suspended so we can't have proper tiles we can't have anything too hard so this is a special type of floor covering so there it is so what do you think about the choice that we've made now we think that this is what we're going to have yes it looks like tiles but in fact it's something called lino which is uh, which is basically plastic which looks like it's something else yes it's made of it's made of a kind of uh, polyvinyl so it's actually vinyl so it's a form of plastic but it's very hard wearing and of course because of the way it's made it looks very realistic so if you walk into the room and you look around it does look quite realistic and it's easy to clean and it's cheap it's easy to clean and it's quite cheap yes Mr Steve likes that part don't you yes oh look uh, Mr Coco from Poland oh Mr Coco hello hello I said that global warming has been created to slow down world energy consumption so there we go then Mr Coco uh, along with a lot of people thinks that there's a, it's a bit of a it's a bit fake when people talk some people don't believe in global warming they think that it's a conspiracy it's a conspiracy and that doesn't really exist and uh, I'm not going to comment on that because I don't really know I don't think anyone really knows well I, I think the thing is the planet the problem is that we're looking at global warming and we're measuring it as human beings over an incredibly small span of time because the human life is finite it is a very short period of time we always think our lives are long I haven't finished Mr Duncan but <laughs> human lives are brief they are very finite just so, yeah so we think that this is a, a large period of time we've only got measurements on the planet's temperature going back a hundred years We've only got a hundred years of measurements, so we're making these uh, these predictions based on an amount of data which, if you take it over geological time, which is millions of years, is an incredible, incredibly small amount of time. So yes, it does look like it's warming, but we don't know. We've no idea what the cycles are in the planet mm. over hundreds and thousands of years so we've really no idea whether we've got anything to do with it or not well we probably have but it's you know it's one of those things we think it is but we don't really know yes we well, won't really know for probably a thousand years yes. what the real trend is or, or even a million years it might take another hundred thousand years to actually find out what the result of what we're doing now is and that's the the real paradox of, yes. of, of these sorts of things because our lives are so short and so that there is no human being that, that has survived long enough to say oh yes we, we had some global warming uh, uh, 700 years ago or 5,000 years ago or 7,000 years ago there's no one really recording that and, and if we had a major volcanic eruption like Mount St Helens the last big one was 1980 something in a 
Was it in America, Mount St. Hel no, it wasn't America. Was it was it? Iceland. Mount St. Helens. Where was that? I don't think that was uh, 1980 something. I can't remember where that was now. But if we have another major one like that, that 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 would uh, that's equivalent to all the uh, CO2 produced by humanity uh, over decades. So, you know, it, we are producing a lot, but it, it's compared to what would happen if there was a large volcanic eruption. It's really nothing. Yes. Well, I'm not saying nothing, but it's it's certainly... Well, it's insignificant you know. <laughs> when you compare it to, well, to, to the big picture. So the big picture really is hundreds of thousands of years or maybe hundreds of millions of years. And here we are with our tiny little lifespans of 60 or 70 years going, oh, I think there's a problem. It's very hard to judge it. And that's the other problem because it's happening very slowly and we can't really see the impact in our life. You sort of can you can see that there's climate change going on. I mean, when we were growing up, you had hard winters and, and, and hot summers. And now all the seasons seem to have blended into in, into one almost. Well, except for the, this uh, one. Except for this one, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the climate change is happening, but we don't know whether that's normal over a cycle anyway. Mm. And because, you know, it doesn't seem to have any great impact, there's no real, there's no real um, force telling us that we really should do anything to change it because in our lifetimes we can't see that it's having any big big, big impact so it's almost like we're saying well let's let the ne next generation sort it out well that's always because, been the way though because I, I think i think it's only recently that we've become aware of all this anyway so it's not like yes. we were think thinking of this a hundred years ago We've only been thinking about this for the last 30 or 40 years. I think it's, the scientist, it's, nothing. I think it's, it's definitely the scientists can show that we have increased levels of CO2 in the atmosphere because since the Industrial Revolution, mm. uh, we have increased levels of CO2 have increased. And it's probably almost certainly due to that. But the impact that that's happening, having, nobody really knows yet. No. But it's probably best to, to try and reduce pollution levels because... It's CO2 isn't the only thing. It's as somebody else pointed out, it's brake dust. It's particles from uh, engines, particularly diesel engines, all sorts of things. All oh, this is a massive subject. Uh, well, we yes, I don't, I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't, I don't really want to get. No, but let's cut. I don't really more want the to, mystery I, object, Mr. Duncan. Ooh, I don't really want to get bogged <laughs> down with this. It's, uh, it's OK for, for a short period, but then it becomes very tedious and boring. Oh, I like talking about the environment. Anyway. Anyway. This thing could be connected with the environment, the mystery Fran object. Francisco. Hi, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve. Is it possible to add a new section in your live lesson just for learning vocabulary associated with images? Well, I do try to do everything. The problem is if I do that, then people will complain that that's boring and they don't want to do that. So I, I try to do lots of things whilst the live stream is going on. Uh, so I don't want to concentrate on one thing for too long, such as mm. Mr. Steve talking about mm. the environment. So the mystery, here he goes. I nearly said the mystery idiom, but in fact, it's a mystery object. Look oh, at that. Look at that. Oh, it's there's long. A, there's a bit more now. Yes. What could that be? What's on the end of there? <laughs> It looks a bit like something you would find maybe in a laboratory or, or, a may hospital. or a hospital, maybe going into someone's ear or maybe up their nose or your unmentionable somewhere else. Ah. So there. So Another little bit of a clue. A little bit more. Yes, we'll show you a little bit more later on. Hey, guess what? This week it is... Happy birthday to YouTube. It is YouTube's birthday this week. Is it? Yes. Let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, <laughs> 13 years. It is 13 years. Oh, do I get a prize? Not really. I didn't know that. I guessed it because you've been on it 12 years, haven't you? Yes. 11 years. Uh, 11 years. And now I'm in my 12th year. So, yes, I, I am just just slightly younger than YouTube itself so yes I am one as I said earlier I'm one of the first if not the first English teacher to teach English on YouTube way back 
in 2006 October the 31st all those years ago when YouTube was a completely different site and everything was dare I say much better they liked you then didn't they YouTube liked me then YouTube doesn't like me anymore because I'm not a sexy lady you've if, disappeared if I was a sexy lady or a computer player a person who likes playing computer games or a music star or a person who just talks about I shouldn't have, shouldn't move, have brought that subject up movies you know so yes I am not considered as being hip and trendy or viewable anymore by YouTube sadly I am now officially on the scrap heap so thank oh, you don't say that mr. Duncan thank you YouTube maybe well 13 <laughs> he said I shouldn't have got mr. Duncan on that subject he, he on, went on about me talking about the environment but once you get mr. Duncan on YouTube uh, he soon gets uh, upset is it a hose pipe says Belarusia is it a hose pipe well, it's a, it's, a ki it's a pipe it's a tube certainly it's a tube but what kind of a tube okay I'm going to show another part of the of the mystery object now another part I'm not going to make this easy well I don't think if we showed the whole thing people would really guess anyway there it is David who just put a, something up there uh, the subtitles if you're new to this channel the subtitles will go on they can't appear because we're live at the moment we are now they're... yes we're, we're now talking to you live so this is a live broadcast so we can't put subtitles on because we don't know what we're going to say next and the system isn't that clever yet but when we've finished and mr. Duncan has finished the subtitles will go on about an hour or two afterwards when the the lesson the, the live lesson will then appear on mr. Duncan's channel and it will have subtitles on it then won't it it will yes hopefully even though having said that YouTube has been very awkward over the past couple of weeks putting my subtitles on so as I mentioned earlier it would appear that that I'm not really considered considered as being well we don't know why though worthy we, we think it's maybe if you go over two hours then you know sometimes if I uh, if I was some spotty faced teenager oh. living in the United States that looks really creepy by the way on the screen <laughs> I don't think you realize just how creepy that looked oh, oh the I fact know. that your arm was off the screen oh, oh. What, what the hell are you it's doing? It's a violin. I'm playing a violin. But when when people are uh, sad, that's what they do, don't they? They play violins. Because Mr. Duncan's always going on about YouTube hating him. Do you want to see my socks? I'm wearing some lovely socks tonight. The, these are the socks that I'm wearing now, right now. There we go. Uh, a live view of my feet. Look at that. Aren't my feet lovely tonight? I'm wearing my walking socks tonight. And now my toes are, are falling in love with each other. Look at that. Oh, so there they are. My socks, my walking socks, because we had a walk earlier and I forgot to change them. So there are my lovely, nice, comfortable walking socks as a way of breaking up the conversation. So what is the mystery object? I want to show it all, Mr. There Duncan. There's a little bit of it. So here it here it comes now and I'm going to show you all of it in one go. Brace yourselves. I'm trying to get it in the right position. Here we go. He's being rude. This 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 we're going to get some very rude answer, shall answers. Shall I shall I demonstrate what can be done with this? I think that's the quietest Mr. Steve has been all night. <laughs> so there it is. What what's it for? What's it for? But what am I going to use it for? <laughs> this I, could have many uses, but yeah. what am I going to use it for? Uh, to be honest, I dread to think what this could be used for. It could be used for many things. I bought it 
on Amazon. <laughs> oh, OK, that that gives a lot away uh, for a specific purpose. I don't think it's what it's meant to be used for. Yes, it is. A, it is a medical device. <laughs> it's not it's not for making vapor. So it's not it's nothing to do with vapor or or drugs. <laughs> and an enema. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jeff well. Jeff one Z says, is it an enema? Is it for lubrication? Mr. Coco, you're very you're actually very near Mr. Coco. Very good. Yes. Very near. Ah, is it for milk or to give medicine to an animal? I suppose you. Could, yes, you could use it for giving medicine to an animal that that is exactly on where I bought this from the the, 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 the this well Amazon I bought it off that is what it was advertised as for giving uh, milk or nutrients to to an animal because you can put it in a cat's mouth or something a cat uh, or, or, and then well I don't know maybe a larger animal <laughs> <laughs> maybe you, a larger animal than a cat could you imagine putting all that into a cat I, I think it I think it would fly around the room so, like a, like a balloon so well done that is what it is advertised for but i'm not going to use it for that a cat somebody else was very close when they said can you bring up the live chat again mr you, you could put it up a cat's bottom i suppose and, and give it you know a little bit of air <laughs> if mr duncan can uh, bring up the live chat again somebody's a nose cleaner yes there <laughs> we go for your a catheter uh, <laughs> no, well yes well musa says yes musa's right that's what it was advertised for Ultimus is close when he says it's for the car. It's not yes. for the car. And Mina, oh. Mina, oh, we're there. Mina, yes, Mina. Yes. Al also, <laughs> Darko, Darko has said, "Is it a public enema?" Number one, I like that. <laughs> That's because, clever because it's a play on words. Instead of enemy, he said enema. Of course, an enema. I suppose we should mention what an enema enema is. It's hard to say, by the way, enema. It's it's for cleaning out your your back end. If if you have some problems there, you can put something up there and then you push water in there and then it clears everything out. But I but think you this, need a bigger tube. This isn't for doing that. I can I can tell you now. It does look like it. It does look like that it does look like that should go up your bottom and that maybe should be full of Yes. So we, we get it, Mr. Duncan. Uh, but uh, two people have been very, very close. If you can buy. Right. OK, so we've got uh, to suck petrol from a car. OK, so I am going to use it not on a car. But what did Mr. Duncan show a video of me doing on Sunday? Anyone that watched on Sunday? What was I doing on Sunday? That's what I'm going to use it for. Oh, I use see. it on. And it is for sucking fluids from an engine. But what? Yeah. But what? Mm -hmm. And if you were watching on Sunday, you will know what I, one of Mr. Duncan's little video inserts. <gasps> Jeff's got it. Jeff. Jeff is, Jeff the, is the, there's the winner. There's, no, no, there's no winner. Please. There is a winner. Yeah, yes. No, there's, <laughs> yes. No, there's no winner because a winner means a prize has to well, be given. We don't give prizes. I am going to use it. We have a correct answer. I'm going to use it for <laughs> sucking the oil out of the lawnmower. Yes. Yes. So Steve is going well to use. Steve is going to use us. So can you show us roughly what you're going to do? Well, without the lawnmower, it's difficult. Well, OK, I'll be the lawnmower. <laughs> oh, don't be rude, Mr. Duncan. I, I'm, the so, lawn, I'm the lawnmower, OK? My lawnmower isn't a very expensive one, so it hasn't got a drain for the oil. Uh, so it's just got a place where you put the oil in, but there's nothing to let the old oil drain out. So every year I've got to change the oil, I've got to have new oil in the uh, lawnmower engine, just as you would in a car. So... I'm going to push that in. Normally what I do is I take the cap off and then I tip the whole machine upside down because it hasn't got a drain hole, as I said. And that's 
Well, it's quite difficult to do because it's quite heavy. So I'm going to use this. I was thought I was being clever. I'm going to push it in there, suck all the oil out. It holds 400 mil. So I have to do this four times because this holds 100 mil. Then I'm going to change the oil. And that's going to be my, that's what I'm going to use it for. So well done, Jeff. Mr. Duncan will send you a very expensive prize through the post. <laughs> won't you, Mr. Duncan? He's joking, he won't. There's no prize. Sorry. But well done for getting it right. That means Jeff was watching on Sunday. He must have been because he must have guessed when he saw me mowing the lawn. You were, that, you, uh, you was very busy. That. Yes, I great. Was. So there it is. So there it is. The mystery object went by so quickly. So it's being used for removing the oil from Mr. Steve's lawnmower. Although, although I, I have a feeling it might be used for something else as well. It won't. I only ordered. I did order two. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> he's, he's ordered a big one. It's huge. I don't know what he's going to do with that one. <sighs> Can you see what I've got in my hand? Do you like that? Uh, it's a torch. Yes. Torch. Why have you got a torch? Look at that. The, can you see the beam of light is shining on Mr. Steve? The light shines on the righteous. It's uh, actually this looks like the sort of thing a doctor would use if he was open wide, Steve. Ah, ah, ah. Not a pretty sight. So no this this is a torch. So we, we tend to call this a torch in British English. But of course, you can also you call it a flashlight, a flashlight, flashlight. <laughs> so a lot of people will say flashlight. If they are maybe American. Yes, they might use flashlight. But in British English, we tend to call this a torch. Now, of course, you can also say lamp as well. So it's a kind of lamp. So anything that gives off light mm. can be described as a lamp. So oh. an electric light is a lamp. And this also could be described as a lamp, especially oh. if it's Are you sure if it's fixed. Yes, you can have a lamp if it's so, fixed. Yes. Normally, if it's fixed, it will be a lamp. And well, did you know, a torch. but of course, torch can be used as a verb as well. Give us an example, Mr. Duncan. If you set fire to something, if you set fire to a house, you torch the house. Yes. So you set fire to it. You start a fire. You torch the house. The house was torched. He went around the back and torched the shed. So if you torch something, it means you set fire to it. And of yes. course, be before these were invented, people used fire as a way of finding their way around at night. So before they had electricity and torches like this, they used to use flames. So that's really how ah, it came to be. You can turn this torch into a lamp. Really? Yes. If you take this off. <laughs> this should be fun. This will be fun. There we go. Ooh. You can take that off and then you can set it down on a table mm -hmm. and it becomes a fixed light. Oh, I see. So it becomes it then becomes a lamp. It's not hot. No. I so feel, if you're in a room, you can just. I feel like I feel like I'm E.T. Ouch. Phone home. Phone <laughs> home. Yes. Interesting. Mm. So fascinating. So there we go. Also, lamp can be used in British English to mean hit someone. So if you hit a person, if you punch them, we can say that you lamp them. You yes. lamp them. Yes. <laughs> if I talk too much, Mr. Duncan might lamp me. Yes. It's not that common these days <laughs> to use that expression, but it can oh, I think, be no, I think you'll find it still is used in maybe in per certain parts of the South. Uh, so yes, they might lamp. You might lamp someone. Yes, Jeff. Jeff's obviously got experience of this. Uh, so Jeff, a turkey baster. Yes. Well, that was the other thing I was going to buy, was a turkey baster. Baster. Uh, yes. And uh, Jeff obviously 
must have done this himself at some point. So uh, interesting. So I suppose you could also use the word because th this reminds me of something that you you use in a doctor's surgery. So does that come off? It, no, they've uh, they've glued that on. I was going to I was going to I was going to break it, Mr. I, Duncan. I was going to rip that off. <laughs> no, so please don't. It, it looks like something you know when you have an injection in your arm. Ooh. It looks a bit like a like a syringe. That is a syringe. So the name of this part this part here that is called a syringe syringe if a doctor came at you with a syringe that big <laughs> I think you'd scream with a needle about that long I think yeah. you'd that's used in comedy films isn't it when the doctor's coming up to you uh, in a comedy film with an injection is it because normally a syringe for human use would only contain about one mil normally one one what uh, one mil What's what's one mil? One mil. It's a very small amount of fluid. You mean a milliliter? A milliliter yes. or one mil. There's a hundred mils in there. Yes. There's not very often. You you might get an injection with ten mil or or, or ten milliliters of, of of some drugs, but normally one or half half a mil. Okay. But a hundred mil, you wouldn't normally have that stuck inside you unless you were unless you were out cold. Uh, suddenly talking about the environment seems interesting I, I, I'm strangely fascinated by this by the way what's a turkey baster a turkey well it, it's a, it's a, a tube mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, with a, uh, with, that you can pump like that and it's got a long a long nozzle on it and, and you use it for sucking the fat out of the tray mm. and it's for basting it's for basting the so you, you the put turkey. you put the oil on top of the turkey whilst it's cooking yes it sort of looks a bit like i'm very <laughs> bad at drawing drawing okay this should be interesting mr steve is now drawing a picture for us all so just stand by <laughs> come on leonardo da vinci quickly what the? there we go <laughs> that's my attempt well, at drawing a, well, a turkey baster well, you won't be able to see that that, look, that, that looks they're about that big uh, what, what is there's that? a big tube on the end and and you and you you suck up the fat like that and then you 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 drop you you can baste your you can baste your meat it doesn't have to be just used for turkey yes it can be used for uh, for for other things so uh, i but think i think when it... you're cooking meat in a tray all the fat comes off in the oven and but sometimes you want to put that fat back on top of the meat you can use a spoon or or, or, or a or a brush but uh, a turkey baster <laughs> let's have a look that looks really rude that's it's sort of like that. so that that end that end there you google you, it you squeeze and then that's like a glass tube so yes i could have used that jeff but i decided i wanted to use this <laughs> but i've just that looks quite rude actually <laughs> I probably so is this I probably shouldn't show this again I'll I'll show it on Sunday and it'll be black because all the oil will be inside Ugh. well I'm assuming it's oil <laughs> actually it's very clean the oil in my lawn though I don't think it really needs changing but you're supposed to change it every year <laughs> fascinating <laughs> uh, are these the sorts of things that you talk about when you go to your rehearsals? Do you talk about the the cleanliness of the oil in your lawnmower and things like that? And the, your your thoughts on the environment? I like to talk about the environment. I like to talk about cars. I can talk about cars all night, as you well know. Nicole says, "Is it is TV a reality show?" Oh, you mean um, you mean this? It is a bit like a reality show. This this is spontaneous and live. It's a soap opera. Yes. A hair dryer without the wire. I don't know what that means. You can inspire or aspire your saliva with it when you go to the dentist. Oh yes, I suppose you could suck. Yes, it can be used for extracting. Yes, that's true. Normally used for extracting liquid liquid no you're not going to use it on my water <laughs> okay I want to see if it works Steve wants to use it on my water no no Steve you can't no <laughs> I said no I don't want to 
Oh, dear me. I want to see what the suction power of this syringe is. You can find out at the weekend when you use it on your lawnmower. I think the bores, I think that's perfect for my lawnmower. Mm, I think so as well. We are going you very... You can film it and then we can show it on Sunday. One more use of the word fine. If something is fine, it can be very what? Oh, I will, you, ah, I, I, will, small. I will give you a clue. Flour. 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 The thing you use for making bread is very fine. Very fine. So it is composed of very small particles. It yes. is fine. So something that is very fine. Also, you can have sandpaper. Sandpaper is something you use for smoothing wood. And you can have very fine sandpaper. It means it is very, the pieces, the particles of sand are very small. It's normally used for smoothing wood. So sandpaper. So fine, something made up of very small particles, such as flour. Coffee, if you if you you can if you finely ground if you finely grind something, mm. it means that you you grind it down into very small particles, uh, or you, like flour, very fine. So you, you like coffee, for example, if you want to grind if you've got a coffee grinder, you grind that down into very small particles, mm. and finely a ground coffee. And as I said earlier, something can be fine as well. So maybe if you describe coffee as fine, it might mean that it's ground to a powder. Also, it might mean that it's very good quality. So if something yes. is fine, it also means it's very good quality. Something is very uh, to it's been made or produced to a very high standard. So, yes, lots of uses of the word fine. It's quite interesting that many of these simple words have many, many uses in the English language. Like the word set, yes. for example. For example, yes, the word set. I, I imagine that the word set has many, many meanings. Maybe on Sunday, Steve, perhaps on Sunday, we could look at the word set. Does that sound like a good idea? So on Sunday when we return, because we are going in a moment, on Sunday when we return, we will talk about the uses of the word set. Does that sound good? We've been trying to do that for the last three weeks. And also some possible names for the new royal baby. I'm thinking maybe Lamar or... Is so, it a boy? Some, some, yes, it's, of course it's a boy. I haven't seen the news. It's Prince something. Maybe they could just call it Prince af after the late pop star. So, so maybe as a tribute to Prince, they could actually just call him Prince. So he would be Prince, Prince. I think they'll call him a traditional king's name, something like George well, what, or is, Harry. Isn't or... one... But one of them is George already. All isn't right he? then. Uh, what what king's names are that we haven't had? Henry. We've we got a Henry. Henry. What about uh, what about Frederick? Prince Frederick. It'll be something like that. It'll be a regal name. When we say regal, we mean something pertaining to the what royal about, family. What about Hans? Hans. Oh, you mean a German name? Yes, because and then that might be a little. A little tribute to their to their German heritage, because, of course, our royal family comes actually from royal uh, German heritage. Frederick. I think that's a German name. Frederick. I like, I like Frederick, actually, as a name. Yes. So Prince, Frederick. Prince Fred. That would be amazing. I haven't had that one for a while, yes. have we? Frederick. I, no. I have a feeling it's going to be something like Charles or maybe Philip as, as, Philip. a, tri as a tribute. Yes. So this is my guess. Now, no one has said anything yet. So I think it's going to be something like Philip after the Duke of Edinburgh, who is now ab about 116 years old. And of course, he won't be around forever. So maybe they will they will call him Philip as a tribute to the Duke of Edinburgh. 
ah so remember where you heard that first it was right here on late and live so I think it might be Philip that's that's what my money is on not that I gamble ever the live chat is very busy by the way it is oh someone says Edward yes yes Edward a very regal name a very royal name what Richard, about Richard yes <laughs> I like I like noise eater says Prince Donald well maybe because Donald Trump is coming to the UK in July so I will be going down to London to wave to him as he as he gets off his plane Arthur apparently he's going to land his plane at the back of Buckingham Palace so uh, that should be interesting what's that oh, Arthur uh, Jamila says Arthur oh I like Arthur that's another good one I think it's going to be Philip I think so after after. Arthur, after King Arthur and the round table yes but but did you know that the round table didn't even exist nobody even knows if it was real or not well I think I think uh, I think Arthur's probably made up as well <laughs> well a lot of it yes well, I, well that's that's the point I'm making yes a lot of it yeah. is just fictitious so we've uh, got a Prince Edward at the moment. People say, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. people always say I look like Prince Edward, don't they? <laughs> yes. You have a few things in common with Prince you Edward. You look at Prince Edward, then look at Mr. Steve, and you will see similarities. My eyes are quite close together, which is a lot of the royals have eyes which are quite close together. Yeah, you have a very royal look, very snooty. That's it. That's the one. Very snooty. When Mr. Steve drives his car, he always has this very snooty look. He sort of when he's driving. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> snooty, yeah. Mr. Steve. But do you remember we went somewhere once? Did we? And uh, we went to um, the Black Country Museum. Yes. And we walked in, and somebody said, "Oh, look, Prince Edward's walked in," and they huh. pointed at me. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that? That, just uh, just recalling a story from the, uh, the past. That's not really a story. That's that's the first line from a story. Wow. Once upon a time, I went into a pub and someone said, "You look like Prince Edward." The end. Sir Steve, yes, Stephen. That would be a good name. Yes. Maybe they could break with tradition and have Stephen. Wouldn't that be amazing? Or what about Duncan? They could call it in Prince Duncan because that's a Scottish name. Yes. And of course, the Queen of England is a big fan of Scotland. She has a house in Scotland that she always goes to to visit at, at the end of the year. So, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Steve, you look really noble. Thank you, Alice. Oh, okay. Michael. Yes, there's another one. <laughs> that's a good uh, that's a good name. Alistair. Yeah. Clive we, one thing one thing <laughs> will happen if whatever name they call this baby yeah uh, half the uh, half the male babies born in England will be called that name for many years afterwards because that's what tends to happen this this is a bit like uh, um, for, for for the names of females female babies a lot of people name them after pop stars like Shania and Rihanna and oh dear Talk about lack of imagination. Are we going? I'm getting tired. <laughs> it's time to say goodbye, Mr. Steve. So we are going in a moment. And thanks for your company tonight. We're back on Sunday. Sunday, of course, we are back at 2 p.m. UK time every Sunday and Wednesday. 10 p.m. UK time. We're back on Sunday talking about all sorts of things. Maybe we will know what the royal baby's name is. But I think I think it's going to be Philip. I have I have a really good feeling about that. Interesting. I think so. Yes, I think it's going to be Prince Philip. So to 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 carry on that name, you see. That's it. It's time to go, Mr. Steve. And and we will leave with one last thing that I want to show and this is something very special this is the last ladybird in the house this is the final one 
and I filmed this tonight in the toilet so there I was I was having a wee wee and I noticed that there was a ladybird watching me which which is a little strange but I decided to film it afterwards and there it is it looks like it's dead but it isn't it's alive because after after I finished filming it actually just walked off it's covered in dust yes it's covered in dust and all sorts of things so there it is there is the last ladybird the ladybirds have all flown away or died or died most of them have probably died by now so that's it we will see you on Sunday thanks a lot for being here I am trying to understand here uh, that comes from Bahalden hello Bahalden we teach English here and I hope you can understand what we are saying thanks. if you can't then you can watch it again with subtitles well if you can't understand us you won't be able to understand what we're saying now so okay unfortunately if you can't understand what I'm saying I won't be able to tell you that there will be subtitles later because you won't be able to understand what I'm saying right. it's 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 like a paradox I suppose good night Darko bye Darko bye just variation bye Alice bye Mustafa bye Nicole see you on Sunday we will be here live from 2 p.m. UK time and don't worry we will be here and Mr. Steve will be here as well on Sunday won't you I will be that sounds hopefully good. talking about uses of the word set hopefully talking <laughs> about uses of the word set but between you and me I think the chances of that happening are pretty pretty slim to say the least Florida Jeff was from Florida oh let's have a look yes that's why he, he, he I thought his English was very good oh your English is very good yes we noticed that earlier buy from Florida and enjoy the rest of your evening because it's still evening early evening in Florida very nice yes I will put the subtitles on later have you oh yeah that's right that yes <laughs> sorry nothing carry oh. on oh, okay. I'll save that thought for uh, I was going to talk about the bromance between uh, the French president and uh, and uh, and uh, President Trump they're calling it a bromance the French president what's his name uh, Emmanuel Macron Emmanuel now there is a great name that that's a name that you can really get your mouth around Emmanuel oh, I'll just take that bit of dandruff off there yes. there we go uh, if I was Donald if I was Macron I would probably punch Donald Trump in the face you see for that they so, think sorry well, but but they almost kissed a they did of, they were kissing on the cheeks but but there the was French one way. there was one moment where I thought Trump and Macron were going to actually kiss each other's lips. It looked like they were very close to having a very long, wet, and and, and sort of you know both of their tongues sort of intertwined in a their bromance. mouth. Bromance. Shall we explain the word bromance before we go? Oh, do we have to? I'm so tired. It's oh. twenty to midnight. We will talk more about this on Sunday because That's I. Interesting. But it's, it is interesting. It will still be interesting on Sunday. Trust me. And maybe Mr. Duncan will film me using this on my lawnmower. <laughs> and then we can show it on Sunday yes. just to prove that that is what it's for. Yes, we might. We might do. Are you OK? I'm waving goodbye. Oh, Mr. Steve is going then. Oh, thanks, Steve. Oh, are we going together? No. Mr. Steve is going to get ready. He needs his beauty bye, sleep. Bye. I don't bye, know what. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, ow! Oh, I'm back. Oh, that, see you Sunday. Did you have to bite? Me? Oh, it's awkward the way I have to go off. Yes, well, just you know, this isn't very professional. I, ca I can't believe you bit me. I will see you on Sunday and I will see you at 2 p.m. UK time. Don't forget. So this is Mr. Duncan saying thanks for watching and I will see you live on Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time because people still ask 
mr duncan when are you on sundays 2 p.m uk time wednesdays 10 p.m uk time i will see you on sunday and of course you know what's coming next you can see i am now waving at 20 minutes away from midnight ta-ta for now